If you're a small farm, your days are so numbered. When you look at what big farms are capable of doing, just there's a there's a reason why there's a reason why automobiles are made in factories. I can't compete with it, yeah. and I don't want to. Today we are in Pollen, on our way to Woodlawn Farmstead, which is run and owned by Seth and Kate Leach, multi-generational farmers who are figuring out ways to adapt dairy to this crazy commodity market that milk has become. And before we dive into all of that, I just want you to look out the window beside me and get a sense for how remote and how freaking beautiful Paul it is. This is truly one of the undiscovered gems in Vermont. It is astonishingly beautiful. You know where I can find Seth? Out failing hay. Look at this view. These cows live with a better view than 99% of humanity. So my name is Seth Leach, and I'm the owner and operator uh, at Woodlawn Farm in Paulette, Vermont. And uh, I'm the seventh generation of my family to run this business. We milk about 120 dairy cows, um, grow all of our own grain and all of our own forages. And uh, we have, we have a, a beef business as well. We figure uh, 1831 is when we started here. How does it feel? What does it mean to you to be on land that your family's been on for so long? <laughs> That's a tough one to just answer, you know? Like, how does it feel? It feels like it doesn't ever feel like a burden. Never. It feels like I mean, basically, I just don't want to be the one that fucks it up, right? Like, it's been going on for a long time. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be the one that it falls on its face under my watch. And how much acreage are you on now? Right now, the home farm is not quite 400 acres, but it's close. There's actually about 75 acres of this upland pasture that we've been working pretty hard at bringing that back to greater productivity. You know, fencing it off, as you can see, and rotating yeah. the cows through it. This is a part of the farm that we all really love and have always loved. It raises our heifers in the summer. We just moved a group of them into this, this fresh paddock here on the right this morning. We've seeded, we've spread manure up here. It's awesome to see that work yield some results. It's, it's like, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. And where does your milk go? So the milk from our farm, the majority of it goes through our co-op uh, into Cabot cheese products. A portion of it is actually sold directly to a couple of cheesemakers in central Vermont, Plymouth Artisan Cheese and Crowley Cheese. The majority of dairy farms in America are entirely um, involved in commodity markets. They sell commodity milk, and their their number one expense is the purchase of commodity grain for, for their cows. When the commodity markets are unfavorable, as a dairy farmer, you essentially don't have any control over what you get paid for what you produce, nor do you have control over what you pay for your single biggest expense. I love what Plymouth and Crowley and I have done. They had a need. They, they couldn't buy the high quality raw milk that they needed in a single source. It, it just, it became like unavailable to them because yeah. of trucking and, you know, proximity to farms and all this stuff that just kind of crumbled on them. And I just went to them and was like, okay, so I'm, I make this much milk. 
here's the quality that you could expect. Is this interesting to you? The answer was yes. You know, and what that's evolved to is I own a milk truck and a wash bay now to make that happen. Vertically integrating, it gives me a degree of control. Essentially, you are creating a product that is designated to be sold to people that are less conscious about price and more conscious of where it's coming from. Mm -hmm. Plymouth and Crowley take they take a wedge of my milk. They pay me a fair price for my milk always. It would be a huge deal if I was selling them half or more of my milk. So I look at I look at consider as this way to potentially take another piece of my production and, and funnel it into a value add yeah. um, channel. It's scary as hell. The idea of saying, well, you know, gonna I'm going to borrow a bunch of money to lease a bunch of equipment yeah. and buy my own milk to make cheese with and then hope we can sell enough. It's going to be tricky getting off the map. There's no two ways about it. With farming, with agriculture, what you get back is a function of what you put in. I would like to be considered as someone that worked really hard, treated people fairly and produced a really quality finished product. I consider all of the stuff that I'm trying to do the, the challenge of being a good farmer, you know. I don't really know how to like quantify the feeling of like the multi-generational thing so much as just like it's it's just in your bones.